Welcome to Painting Drago. This is our first in a new painting tutorial series I'm starting off. And we'll jump right in. So we'll start off, I'm doing a base coat of Citadel Foundation Mech Right Red. Still got some of it from the, the old GW line. and using the airbrush for this. And just giving all the red areas a good solid coat from all the different angles. You'll find the all the base coating is being done with, at least the red color is being done with my airbrush. I picked up a new airbrush just recently. I had been using a Aztec from Testers, but uh, I had to decided I wanted to give something else a try. So I found a airbrush online that I wanted to give a try. It's a no-name brand, and uh, so far I've been quite happy with it. So. For those of you who haven't picked up an airbrush yet, it's uh, it's amazing how much time and effort and energy it'll save you. So if you haven't taken the plunge yet, definitely take a look at it. I found that it's uh, it saved me hundreds of hours of just the uh, base coating and, and such. So. Get all the areas good coverage. I use the. I've heard a few people comment that they don't like using the foundation paints in the airbrush. I found that it didn't really. I didn't have much problem with it. I used the Vallejo um, thinner, the airbrush thinner for it, at almost a, like a two to one ratio of the thinner to the the paint, and everything seemed to come through fairly good. So I didn't have any complaints. So next up to my first level of highlights, I use the Citadel base, the fist in red. Now the colors, I'm just I'm listing the colors that I use just for so you know. I mean, by all means, if you have a different type of red or different shade of red, if you want to use some of the P3 paints, or if you prefer the the Vallejo game color, or the the Reaper series of paints, by all means, use whatever you you want. Just you want to start with a, a darker, deep red, and then work your way up on the highlights. So here I'm hitting everything except the really deep recesses of the Mechrite red. I'm using the top as the, the the light source. So now for my next highlight, I'm using the P3 Kedor base red, and this is uh, my second level of highlights. And so here I'm being sure to hit at a almost a downward angle because I don't want to spill over into any of the uh, the base coats I've did before. Now on camera, this comes off as being really bright red. We're gonna bring that down with uh, some washes um, afterwards. And again, at this point, making sure I'm not hitting anything more than about a 45 degree angle. So the next highlight, I guess this would be the third highlight, we're using Citadel Fire Orange. Now this is, I've had this paint for, I have hate to admit it, like 25 years now, so I'm not sure what the, the equivalent, but it's it's like a orangey red. And here again, I'm just hitting the top points, just as a highlight. And then my last highlight was a mix of fire half Fire Orange and half Sunburst Yellow. Again, it's the old Citadel um, paints from the, the old, you know, for anyone who's been doing this for a while, it's from the old, old uh, monster and, and paint boxes from uh, from the late 80s. So now on to the metallics. I could have airbrushed them, but I found I, I'm not quite that good yet. So um, I used uh, the Vallejo Model Air Steel for all the silver areas. I really like this paint, and I'm sure anyone who's watched any of the tutorials from a lot of the other big names in this, um, they swear by this paint, and it's it's absolutely amazing to work with. It covers almost everything in one coat. It looks really good. It uh, you can even thin it a little bit to make it uh, to go on a little bit easier as well. So. I generally thin mine about uh, two parts paint to one part water, because I find after if I use too much, it'll start the water starts or the paint starts to thicken a little bit. So, um, and this stuff just goes on like a dream. And uh, they've got uh, a number of different silvers, although the silvers look a little bit uh, are often close in, in the uh, the color, so it's really hard to distinguish between uh, the aluminum and the the go the silver and the uh, steel and the all the different versions so
now with the red you notice we started with the really the base color or the the darkest shadow and then worked our way up with the silver we're almost doing the exact opposite we're starting with the highest almost the highest highlight and then we're going to wash it and then uh, do a go back and touch it up but it's i know the first couple of times i used this bright silver as my uh as my base coat i got a little worried about how just in your face bright silver it was but the the washes do a great job of bringing that down my old technique was to start with just black and then dry brush some of the rust color and then dry brush some of the uh the like the um, bolter bolt gun metal or in this case the gun metal from the vallejo model air which looks really good um, but it does take significantly more time to get through that and i wanted to try the uh, the, the oil wash technique as well so And as Draco is a uh, fairly significant warjack, he has a lot of silver on him. Everything's being presented at 300 times speed as well, so I'm even at 300 times speed, it seems to take a bit of while to get through all of this. And you notice the paint does begin to separate a little bit as well, so but generally it goes back pretty easily. I'm following the studio paint guide on this one. I haven't taken many many liberties because this is uh, actually a friend of mine's less as his. Uh, is Drago, so I didn't really want to go too more far off of what the uh, the established standard was. Definitely a fun model to paint, though. I had uh, I hadn't done a, a big jack like this because I've been sticking primarily to War Beasts for my Trollbloods. A lot of nook and, nook and crannies on these things. Try to keep it in the camera view as much as possible, but sometimes you get uh, hidden behind. And comment below, one of the things I found that was a bit of a challenge at times was getting into all the nooks and crannies with the model being built. Comment below, when you put when you do these kind of kits, do you put it together completely or do you put it, uh, especially if you use an airbrush, um, do you put it together all to at once or do you go back and, and put it, do it by pieces? The reason I'm asking is one of the things about the, the, the airbrush, the, the shading method or the highlighting method I use, you want to make sure that you've got the model in the final position so you know where everything's going. We're doing it individually would be, I mean, I guess you could do it, but it, it just adds a bit of complexity to it. So comment below and say, do you, do you assemble the stuff first or do you pre-paint some of it and put it together or, or how do you do it? I'm just curious to see what the uh, everyone else's take on it. Because I know with a lot of these tutorials, you see most of the stuff already pre-built. I mean, if you look at things like Les Bursley or um, Schnauzer face video or uh, painting, which is uh, my new current uh, uh, favorite uh, tutorial guy, he um, they often have their stuff put together almost completely before they start painting it. Or if you look at the by painted guy, because well, most of his stuff is GW kits, he does a lot of his stuff prior to building. So let me know what you do. Abundance of silver pieces are almost done.
Next up, we're going to use all the gold. Do all the gold with the Vallejo liquid metal. I guess it's Vallejo liquid gold. This is the red gold. Um, now, this is an alcohol-based paint, which is absolutely fantastic. Now, the one thing you have to be careful about is it does have to be uh, thinned down with alcohol, and your brushes have to be clean in alcohol, and it will destroy any natural hair uh, brushes if you're not careful. So I've been, I just went back and grabbed one of my old Armory brushes from the uh, the early 90s, and I've been using that one with uh, with great success. I found you have to thin it down on a regular basis as well, but the coverage on it is very good. Oh, a little bit out of focus there. There we go. And again, this one looks a little bit brighter as well, but uh, it is uh, it will all get brought down with that the oil wash. I found this one stuff you yeah, really have to, because the alcohol evaporates fairly quickly, you have to be very quick, um, or have to keep adding more alcohol to thin it out to get the consistency for it to flow off the brush nicely. Unfortunately, there's no one in my immediate area that carries this, so I've actually had to get it whenever I go visit my uh, visit family out on the other side of Toronto, which I go out every couple months, and I'll be picking up a few more bottles of this stuff, the silver, and I think there's a copper one I want to try out as well. If anyone's used the silver or the copper, let me know what you think about it, because I know that I've got the gold and the red gold, or old gold and red gold, and I swear by them I won't use any of the other uh, metallic golds right now, because I find you don't get the same flow and feel for them. It's like night and day. I've, I've tried a number of different metallic paints, and this is by far the nicest one. I've struggled with some of the old Citadel ones, and and then uh, and then tried the the Reaper stuff and the um, the P3 stuff, and just wasn't didn't f work well with my technique for painting. So so next up, just going to hit all the areas that need to be black with some Vallejo model color black. You'll notice my paint range is fairly eclectic. I don't buy just one brand. I like trying out the different different types of paints. So I've got a little bit of everything from Vallejo to um, Reaper to P3 to Citadel. And I've got a lot of old, the old Citadel stuff from the original paint pots from the late 80s, early 90s. None of the bolter shell, shell ones from the early 2000s that dried out within a matter of uh, months. So here, just again, just covering the black. So now I'm going to take, and I got this this tape from uh, Schnauzer Face Minis, where you basically just give a, a, a bit of a dry brush of some of the Vallejo weathering pigments. This is the the carbon black. So what this does is it just helps dull down some of the colors a little bit and adds a bit of shadow in there for you when you get right into the little crevices and such. It's very subtle. I wasn't uh, I wasn't didn't really notice it until after the uh, the wash had gone on, or sorry, the, the varnish had gone on, but it does bring it down just a little bit. Now I was quite, uh, I, I think I went a little bit too much on this, where you see I, I'm losing a bunch of the, the powder as well, but um, I'm a little more aggressive, but yeah, it definitely does, and you can get into the the, uh, the crevices, so it, it just adds that little bit of, uh, of, brings the silver down just that little bit before the wash goes on. And you can use uh, any kind of weathering pigment. I just happen to have the, the Vallejo stuff. Now to set everything, I'm going to use some Liquidex gloss varnish. So basically what this will do is it'll protect everything I've done so far, as well as give the wash a nice uh, smooth surface to, uh, to to go against. So basically it helps the capillary action as well as, which is basically meaning that the all the ink slides into the, the grooves, into the, the crevices. At the same time it protects anything so I can remove the excess wash afterwards without affecting the paint underneath. So Liquid X, I just picked that up at Michael's using a 50% off coupon. So if you don't use Michael's for some of your stuff, by all means go out there and get some of the stuff because the I think the wash and the paint cost me maybe 20 bucks altogether, and I have enough black and brown wash now to last me for a lifetime. So, so the using the Windsor black, uh, the black ivory, um, or ivory black, and basically with a take a little bit of the, the oil paint, mix it with some um, mineral spirits, not turpentine. I've been using mineral spirits, 
and to get a nice consistency and just pour that stuff all over the place. Um, this is the, one of the first times I've actually I've used the, the oil wash a couple times before, but I was amazed the results you get on it. And again, it, you, you never have to buy, uh, you never have to use the uh, any of the other washes like the Citadel washes for this kind of stuff. Again, I mean you're still using for other uh, key like touch up things, but for for washing now, I think this is the the best route to go because it's so easy. And because it's oil based paint and it dries differently, it will. Um, it allows you to, to move stuff around when you clean it up. So basically I'm just splothering the stuff all over, anything that's metal and anything that's red. And as you can see, it's already brought some of that oranginess and the, the brightness of the silver down dramatically. And just get in all the little grooves and such. So now after it's dried, take a Q-tip that has some of the uh, some of that mineral spirit on it and just move off remove the the wash from the areas you don't want it so I'm actually going to try something next time I, the q-tip works really well but I find in models like this with a lot of sharp points and edges the um, you wind up getting strings of cotton coming off which I didn't see all of them and I, I noticed later on when I was, after I had sealed this that I had sealed in some cotton on that so I think I'm going to try next time to actually use um, a, like a wide flat brush and uh, like this one here and sort of move the stuff around so I'm doing the same thing as I did with the black but this time with the brown this is the Windsor Newton uh, Van Dyke brown and just getting into the different areas uh, mostly on the gold and again on the silver just to give it a bit of a dirtier look and the same re recipe, just a little, little dab of the paint with uh, enough of the uh, mineral spirits to thin it out into a nice uh, wash consistency. And the nice thing of this, because we did the base coat before with the um, with the, the gloss varnish, if you make mistakes, just you can wipe it all down so you can always start over. So you don't have to worry about putting uh, too much on because you can always remove it. And as you can see, the brown and the black really bring down that red, so it's not that uh, almost orange now. It looks more like a darker more of a, a red rather than an orangey red. And it gives the the metal a bit of an aged look as well. And same thing, Q-tips just sort of wipe off all that excess. You notice a lot of the black and the, the, the brown are staying in the, the crevices, which is what you want. Just be careful when you're doing this to uh, to avoid getting those little cotton strings. Next up, just give it a good solid coat of the Vallejo Model Air Matte Varnish. This again is going to protect everything that we've done. And then go back and over all the metal parts, I'm just going to go back with the, some of that Vallejo Model Air Steel and just basically do my highlights on there. So I just, I'm just doing one level of highlights because I'm really for the, what I'm doing for less, I'm just trying to get it to tabletop quality. I'm not going for super uh, fantastic. I'm just looking for uh, looks good on the table. And so I'm basically just trying to make sure I hit all the, the highlight points that are to figure if the light source is look, you're looking down or the light source is pointing down on the model. So I'm, that's where I'm trying to get all the highlights. And the one thing I noticed with the wash is I did wind up blowing out some of the... Um, I didn't remove enough of the... Um, the wash, so some of the, the bolts I had to go back and touch up. Now we're into the the blue of the, the sword. I guess this is how why it's uh, when it does a critical hit, it turns it uh, frozen. So I started with the RP3 Arcane Blue, which is like a, a lighter blue, and just sort of used my brush. To, it was a zero brush to get in between those spots. Next up, used a mix of half Arcane Blue, half uh, Model Air White, and did about half of it through, and then just the tat last little bit of highlight with the white there and then use the same technique for these to, to fire within there so I started with the Citadel fire, fire Orange now the covering on this paint was was horrible so it took and then I wound up uh, I didn't film at all because it I think it took me about 10 minutes to get that so then next a mix of fire orange and sunburst yellow and just painting up half that 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 length of the, the vent 
and then I just thinned that down with a little bit of white and just uh, and did that last little highlight. So now the skulls, just start with just base coat of uh, P3 Jackbone. And then a quick wash of the Citadel Del Delvin mud. I didn't uh, do this ahead of time, so I could have I could have done this with the oil wash. I just didn't get uh, I missed them for some reason. So just give them a nice little wash. Go back with the Jackbone again and just uh, hit all the top pieces and, and, and top parts and, and look, uh, making sure not to, to leave the ink in the, the deepest recesses. And then lastly, hit them with the final highlight of the Citadel beach bleached bone. Again, just the top little highlight parts where the light would hit them. And lastly, then just to do some highlights on the black with the P3 coal black. This is like a a blacky blue, which makes good for highlights, especially complements the the blue of the axe. I was fairly liberal with this because I wanted to make sure it stuck out. I really like this color because it's something that's unique and you don't really see a lot of it um, in any other paint range. So, and uh, just the just hitting the the higher edges there. And there we go. We got a finished. Drago. Now, well, finished for part one. This is just the basic, uh, basic painting. Now, you would not expect uh, Drago to look nearly as neat and prim as he would if he had been the game. So, part two of this, uh, or the next part of the series, is going to be weathering Drago, where I do a bunch of chipping and and rust and such on him to make him look like he's gone through some battles. Also, we we do a number of other videos, the Deathhead Dice. So I've got a Trollbloods box to battle series. We follow my Trollbloods uh, from the unboxing through to some games, and I also do War Machine Hordes battle reports. So click on the link for either of those. Um, if you like this series and or this video and want to see more, by all means, uh, click on subscribe and, and like. Appreciate all the uh, the subscriptions we've gotten over the last couple months and the views, so appreciate that. And if you have any questions or suggestions or comments, feel free to th throw them below. And you can follow us on Twitter or on our website as well. So thank you very much, and stay tuned for part two, Weathering Drago, coming soon.